This video is going to be a film study commentary and evaluation about Trayvon Mullen, a free agent corner that the Ravens signed before the draft. Of course, he's Lamar Jackson's cousin. Uh, someone had mentioned this to me after a video recently. Uh, full disclosure, I was really only able to look at three games. I'm only going to show you film from two of them. Uh, one of the games Ravens fans should be quite familiar with. Week 1, 2021, Trayvon Mullen was playing for the Raiders when the Ravens went to Las Vegas and lost, I think, 33-27 in overtime. He's an interesting corner for a veteran, if you ask me. Being as he's only 25 years old, his former second-round second draft pick, Ravens signed him before the draft, and before they signed Rock Yassin and free agent just after the draft. I, I find him to be someone who has some pretty clear strengths, maybe one relative weakness, but if he would, you know, if I was going to do Madden ratings, I would say they would be generally pretty balanced as far as man and zone coverage skills. Maybe sometimes my basketball analogies go too far. So, f so feel free to tell me if you think they do, if you've watched the channel much and you think my basketball analogies are, are off, you know, target. Uh, but I have one for you for Trayvon Mullen who was drafted, like I said, in the second round by the Raiders in the 2019 NFL Draft. Some, sometimes in the NBA you get, or, or in any level of basketball, you get guys who uh, can't play man, but they can do something so well at the offensive end, maybe it's shoot, rebound, whatever, but they can't play man. So you're limited in what you can play when that person's on the, on the court. Zone. All right, NBA, you're generally talking about zone or man. There's, there's match zone stuff, 1-3-1 one, one match, whatever. Uh, whatever your familiarity is with basketball, I don't want to get caught up in it. That That's not a, a stark, that's not a perfect comparison for Trayvon Mullen. It's not like saying he's very good in man, but he's poor in zone. I think he's good at a particular type of man. I don't think it's press man. However, you will see some good reps of press man here. When I say press man, when I f refer to it as press man, I mean press man getting your hands on someone from the line of scrimmage. To me, he seems to be good at like a half bail version of press man not bailing before the snap but bailing just after the snap once the receiver makes his move giving up leverage side because he understands where his leverage help is someone who to me in the limited reps i've seen limited snaps i've seen is pretty good in zone as well and i would say is, is pretty good in off man and in certain situations been good in press man i i question how good he is in quarters split field coverage stuff but he's exceptional at keeping his eyes on the quarterback and being able to see the routes and break on stuff. I think you'll see at least two versions of of quarters coverage, split field coverages here in this video. Uh, we've played three years with the Raiders. We're going to get the film running here. Did play three years with the Raiders after being drafted, like I said, in the second round. And then split 2022 between two teams, Arizona and the Cowboys. This is an interception up at the top of the screen. I'll let it run a couple of times. I think like an 18- or 20-yard return. He was active in in eight games for the Cardinals in 2022, and you will see a little bit of film of him against the Patriots. And then he played in one game for the Cowboys the, the last week of the regular season last year. Statistically in 2022, not much impact. One pass defended, zero interceptions, I think like 15 or 16 tackles. But I think he will push to get on the roster. Um, here he is battling, I think, against Deontay Johnson, and you're going to see an extensive amount of film from 2021. I think this is week two, 2021, the week after the Raiders beat the Ravens in Las Vegas. And you can see he's physical with Deontay Johnson here, kind of overwhelming him with physicality a few times, and you'll get to see some some reps of that. He's very similar to Rock Yassin with one sort of like inverse difference. And I do like a lot of what I saw, to be honest with you, from watching the Ravens, re-watching the Ravens game in 2021. Thought he was in good position in a number of plays. I didn't really see much to show you from that. Steelers 2021, like I said, week two. Here he is with the interception again. And then Patriots 2022 while playing for Arizona. After watching the film, saving up maybe 25 plays and then cutting that down to 13 or 14 for you guys to see, I would say he's talented. He's tough. And while I do have some good reps here in press man, this one, you know, he's close to the line of scrimmage, but he's not pressing Deontay Johnson. He's not getting hands on him right at the line of scrimmage. He's just running with him on inside release, but keeping his outside leverage. I actually think he's better suited to this type of coverage where he's running with someone and he knows his safety help is inside here. Jonathan Abram appears to be uh, potentially looking at someone in the backfield to cover, but 
he has help. When I say he has Trayvon Mullen, Trayvon Mullen has help on the outside. So he's going to stay on the inside of this, you know, little what I would call post corner route. He plays well with leverage. Very smart corner, if you ask me. Get some good reps, good coverage against Deontay Johnson. Two bad ones will stand out, though. Uh, I got no problem if you if you want to be critical of these two. So, like I said, plays with good leverage, which is shown on this second play. Understands where his help is. And, and on the post corner, you know, he just leaves Ben Roethlisberger nowhere to throw the football. And Big Ben pretty much, you, you, you can admit, just throws that thing away. Speed to run with verticals. Chase Claypool, again, he appears to be up in press man, but he's going to bail before the snap here. This is true press bail, at least for me. I think his man coverage skills are different from Rocky Sin and Kaya Blue Kelly in this way. Those two, I think, seem better and more comfortable, maybe. We'll put it at least that way, more comfortable at press man, where they can get hands on wide receivers and reroute to me. Trayvon Mullen looks more comfortable in this situation and the second play that I showed you, the post corner route that he obliterated, took away from Deontay Johnson. With a little bit more depth, or at least getting off in coverage, pre-snap or right at the snap, and then playing his leverage side based upon where the safety help is, whether it's man, zone, etc. Rockison and Kaya Blue Kelly, I would say, are guys who look a little better in press man, although I thought Kaya Blue Kelly looked like a guy who could do both. Up at the top here. I think this is a completion to Deontay Johnson. It's not that I don't think Trayvon Mullen can play here because look at the reps you're getting. I mean, even that's a contested catch by Deontay Johnson. I think is not bad coverage by Trayvon Mullen. I just think his feet are slightly off right here. But he's got to cross over and open his hips to the sideline. And it stays on the inside hip. He leaves that gap there intentionally because he's trying to see what Deontay Johnson's trying to do. There's enough room there between him and the sideline that he thinks he can recover. In this case, Deontay Johnson's got such great feet. He's able to pull this thing down in terms of the route. Ben Roethlisberger has already let go of it. Contested catch. Trayvon Mullen is there to try to, you know, get a pass defended. First three years in the league with the Raiders, I think 28 passes defended. Four interceptions as well, including the one that I showed you on the first play. I like his eyes here, being able to look at the quarterback and, and the route. And I don't, this goes for like a 21 yard return. I cut the video off. I think it's ruled a fumble, but I think it's given the force fumble by the inside linebacker, but I could be wrong. But you can see the burst that Trayvon Mullen has. And this is last year's film against the Patriots. The burst that he has when he sees something in front of him to break on. You'll see some tackles later on. You'll see him breaking on two snag routes by uh, Juju Smith-Schuster or Schuster, however you say his name. I think he looks smoother and more able to compensate for change of direction when he's playing that press bail or just after the snap, just turning and getting depth with the receiver and staying on the leverage side. He's sent one, this here, this play here, is similar to what I see out of Rocky Sin, that he breaks downhill well and has a very clear burst. I think he tackles well, better than I was led to believe by certain people's comments. Again, I'm going just off the of two games, though, one in 2021, one in 2022. So there's surely other film that can be interpreted uh, by other people. This is, again, a, a, a tough catch by, I think it's Bourne where Mullen kind of loses track of him. I don't have the time to watch six or seven games on him like that. I wish, you know, maybe if this thing turns into a full-time gig eventually. I didn't see a lot of pre-snap communication with him, with the Cardinals. I just didn't. But but that entire defense was really poor. Inconsistent at best, if I'm going to be, um, I'm going to try not to be harsh. So it could have been systemic. could be systemic. I would just say the change of direction here might be something that some people are going to be a little bit more critical of than I am being. You'd like to see him stick with the receiver, whether it's zone or man. All zone becomes man at some point, and you'd like to see not as much separation here for a big receiver to be able to make a play. He's a competitor. I think he's going to give his best. Do I think he's a starter for the Ravens in 2022? Not if Marcus Peters, Rocky Sin, and Marlon Humphrey are there. It surely seems like Marcus Peters isn't going to be. I do like how he keeps... His eyes on the route and the quarterback. He's down at the bottom here. My apologies. I do like how he keeps his eyes on the quarterback and the receiver. This is an example of him, however, and I've seen three of these, where in man coverage, he thinks he's wiped out the route, 
he thinks he's wiped out the receiver in terms of making it to where he doesn't really have a chance to catch the football because he's pushing this guy so far to the sideline. I believe this is Deontay Johnson again, but you can see his eyes are now back in the quarterback. I mean, unless you're seeing something I'm, that I'm seeing, this is just straight man. I don't know why he's looking back at the quarterback unless he thinks the ball is going to be out because it's third and nine. So I think he's very aware, and in this case, I think he just, I don't want to say guessed wrong. It's a good guess. It's third and nine. You think they're going to throw to the sticks. In this case, you're dealing with Ben Roethlisberger, who's just tremendous guts and gall. And he's going to throw the thing up top. They got a DPI. Certainly not a great rep by Trayvon Mullen. You're welcome to watch it again. Physical with smaller wide receivers. Handsy is some of the notes um, that I wrote. Again, good at keeping his eyes on the quarterback in zone or what I think is quarters coverage. Saw him look back at the quarterback in man on this play and two others as well. Will he start for the Ravens? I think Rocky Sin looks more consistent to me. But there's good competition there. Now, this is an example of something that you can talk about the Cardinals' defense. I believe this is going to be a three-deep, three-under coverage. And you're getting two verticals, one by the tight end here, up the seam, and then one by the number one receiver. And you're getting a three-deep package, three-deep structure post-snap. So we'll pause it, and then I'll let it come back to the beginning. So just so I can, you know, kind of explain it well, hopefully. So you're getting a three deep structure by the corner here, the free safety, and this corner here. But you can see you got a man turn here by this corner and a zone turn here up top. So you got possibly two different calls, but in a three deep, three under look for me, where you're getting guys running through zones, they're this strong safety appears to be passing him off to the inside leverage. This, I believe, is Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons passing the tight off off to outside leverage. To me, those look like zone here, zone here, zone here, zone here. And then you got man down bottom, and you get a completion up top. For me, if I want to focus on Trayvon Mullen, the way I understand it, the way that we have tried to defend this before out of a three shell is divider. It's not going to solve the issue. Now, maybe it will on the on a rep with Mac Jones, and I don't mean to be disrespectful. He doesn't have as big an arm as at least six or eight or ten other quarterbacks in the NFL. When we say divider, we've got a vertical by the tight end, and I intentionally kind of drew that you know, a little bit further to the downside, and I intentionally kind of widened these two up. Divider meaning we would like on two verticals for you to be in the middle here, dividing those two verticals dividing them and with the ability to defend either one. Now, if this route is run in here, further towards the hash, well, you don't want him to leave number one. So, like, we had divider rules in terms of how far we would let you divide, how far we would let you get between the number one and number two receivers. In this case, he falls down, loses leverage. It looks like, to me, he's trying to get to some type of divider. I have no idea why the uh, speed slowed down. I hit something I didn't want to. My apologies. Yes, yeah, significantly slower. You live and learn. But you can see that he's there's a problem here with letting the guy release vertically. And this and this dude over here did the same thing. So they, they both released these guys. You know, they're past five yards. It's the NFL. You can't make contact past five yards. You can have all that shit. Like, point being, make contact with people. Make it difficult for people to run through your zones, number one. Number two, try to take away the nearest or easiest throw if you're Trayvon Mullen. You know, just to, to be heavy to be a little too harsh on him not knowing the coverage call certainly looks like man down bottom zone up top zone by the uh number two defenders the the curl flat defenders uh simmons and the strong safety at the bottom of the screen but in any case arizona's defense tough to watch i'm glad i didn't watch too many games of it for real four interceptions 28 passes defended over the course of three years with the raiders and then i believe they let him go and signed rock yasin uh, mullen goes to arizona like I said before, and then the Cowboys late in the season, only active for one game, inactive for the wild card playoff game, the Cowboys win, and then not on the roster thereafter. Ends up signing with the Ravens, who eventually re-signed his cousin Lamar Jackson. What do we get out of Trayvon Mullen? I, I think he competes with Kaya Blue Kelly and J.A.D., to, to be on the roster for being active. I mean, I think Rocky Sin is active. I think Rocky Sin is active and, and on the field as much as he can be. I think I've got the speed correct here now. Uh, I think Rocky Sin is on the field. As long as he's healthy, he's on the team, he's on the field. Coming forward, I do like this guy. 
I think athletically at 6'2", 200, it's quite enticing to see what he can do, man. I'm excited. The film may not be overwhelming to you. I'm just not a guy who thinks that a corner's got to have a, a ton of interceptions, even passes defended for me to think he's a good football player. Trayvon Mullen is generally in the right place. He's generally there at the right time. Uh, he generally does tackle well. So when he arrives at the point of attack, he arrives with some attitude. I'm excited to see what he can do. He brings depth. He brings toughness. Comes downhill, committed. Not sure why he didn't get more reps in Arizona. Film didn't look too bad. It was limited film. Like I said, I admitted that up front. You guys let me know what you think. I uh, would like for some of these videos to be in the 10, 12 minute range. But for me to go as in-depth as I would like to at times, I feel like I've got to kind of belabor certain points. Let you. I'm doing this recently too, letting you guys see the plays multiple times. And, and let me know if you think that's overkill. Uh, in some cases, I certainly recognize that some people may not want to see it. All right, a couple examples here of him breaking on shorter routes. I think he got a tight end going out into the flats, and then Juju kind of curling this up like a little outside curl. I would still call it snag flat, even though it's not an angled hook, and he's turned into the outside. Trayvon Mull I almost called him Rockus in. Trayvon Mullen breaking, making the tackle for a short game. I think this is man, and I'm using this one and the next play back-to-back to back intentionally. I believe this is a man. It's going to be the same route concept on the next play. And Trayvon Mullen's eye discipline, he's going to be up top here. And he's going to make the same tackle right around this area. Pretty violent tackle. This is zone now. I'll let it run a couple of times so you can confirm that yourself. I think he's got good eyes. I think he's got really good eyes on the quarterback. Ability to see and decipher routes. Understand where what he should break on. I'm interested to see him in zone coverage more. I know the Ravens are going to play a lot of quarters, split field stuff. I'm interested to see him there as well. I think it suits him being in some more off coverage alignments. When I say off, I mean four, five, six yards off where the, the split field coverage can be disguised as opposed to press man. There's a little bit less of an opportunity to disguise it unless you bail uh, post snap because you're reading the corners generally going to be reading two uh, for the split field coverage call. But in any case, you know, that's maybe a video topic for another day. Good player, got a great motor, interesting signing, good upside. Can't say great upside because I don't have film of the four interceptions. I only have film of one. I do have film of what I believe is him playing a role in a forced fumble that was that was called back. I think it was called Arizona ball downed, you know, where he hit. Um, I think it was Aguilar. I could be wrong. A great play from the other side of the field here. Touchdown saving tackle. There's other guys involved. 33, obviously, he's got speed. But Trayvon Mullen is there to close it off. You guys let me know what you think. I like the signing. I like the player. I like uh, the aggression. I think the Ravens have got a guy, another guy, who they can use. Maybe Marcus Peters has more pure talent and obviously a way better resume than Rocky Sin, Kaya Blue Kelly, and, Na and in this case, Trayvon Mullen. Combined, he has a better resume and better talent, no doubt. But those guys do offer us depth. They do offer us options. Better athletes, all three, than Brandon Stevens as an outside corner. Better coverage skills. Going to be tighter coverage. Guys who, uh, if they're on the field at left outside corner, which is where Rocky Sin plays, and it's where Trayvon Mullen plays, at least the film that I have of him, and Marlon Humphrey's on the other side, we know who's going to be targeted more often than not. You guys let me know what you think. The video probably went on a couple of minutes longer. If you have any other players you'd like to see me do video videos of, let me know. I got a, a request in the Discord from Stacy Van Diver for uh, Travis Jones Part 2. Look, so I'm compiling some end zone film there and working on a Part 4 Ravens offense breakdown, uh, how Todd Munkin and Lamar Jackson can change the Ravens offense, can advance the Ravens offense, improve it, whatever word you want to use, you can feel free to fill it in there. Let me know what you think of the video. If you enjoyed it, please tell me in the comment section. If you think other Ravens fans, uh, maybe even Raiders, Cardinals fans, whatever would enjoy this video, please consider sharing a link on social media to help the video get more reach. Appreciate you guys' time.